do you believe this place is haunted? Yes, I do. I do. There's been murder, there's been a couple of really horrific deaths as well. Underneath the Adelaide Arcade. Okay, so I was walking just, uh, towards the stairs. A small child known as Sydney. But he sort of vanished out of my view. Something that looks wispy coming through. Yeah, we have figures seen here, the equipment goes off. Can you walk up and down the stairs? Thank you for tuning into Amy's Crypt tonight. I am headed into one of the most haunted shopping arcades in Australia to investigate. I'm also going to be heading down underneath it into its underground section. If you guys are interested in exploring and investigating the Adelaide Arcade for yourselves, look up Adelaide Haunted Horizons. I'm going to link them below. They do paranormal investigations and ghost tours. You guys should also check out and follow them on Facebook because they're creating a lot of great content over there. But Let's get into the arcade. The Adelaide Arcade dates back to 1885 and today remains a boutique shopping destination. The arcade's shockingly brutal history of death makes it an unlikely haunted location. In 1887, the then caretaker of the building, Francis Clooney, was mangled and killed in the arcade's generator. Later, in 1902, a toddler by the name of Sydney died within the mall from inhaling excess amounts of coal gas. Finally, in 1904, a woman was murdered just out front of the notorious shopping destination. Many people believe that each of these deaths could help explain why the Adelaide Arcade is so haunted. Tonight, we set out to investigate some of the most active areas of the arcade. These include the underground rooms where child spirits have been heard and the area where Francis Clooney met his dark fate. All right guys, so we just headed to the Adelaide Arcade right now and it is probably not the type of arcade that you are thinking of. You need to think of this place more of a shopping mall. So it's actually very old. It's the oldest shopping arcade in Australia. And you'd think, oh, well, just a bunch of shops. Why would this be haunted? But seriously, guys, when we get there and you hear about the hauntings and the stories and the true history of this place, it's gonna shock you. This place is very intense and I'm very excited to highlight it on Amy's Crypt. Alright guys, I'm joined here by CAG of Adelaide Haunted Horizons. You guys might remember we spoke to CAG at the National Railway Museum and Z Ward. Yeah. And CAG works here at the Adelaide Arcade a lot as well. So can mm -hmm. you tell me a little bit about the history of this place and what makes it interesting? Um, well, it was built in 1885 at the boom time of, for Adelaide and we've had um, quite a few dark things happening here. So. A um, couple of, there's been murder, there's been um, a couple of really horrific deaths as well, so, and it seems to, well, one in particular, one person in particular seems to still be here. Can you tell me a bit him. about that person? That's Francis Clooney. Yeah, Francis Clooney, he was the beagle, or caretaker here, and he died here in 1887, just two years after the building was built, um, and he unfortunately uh, fell into the generator that used to work with electric light, so, horrific death. Yeah. But he likes to make himself known to anybody that works here. So any of the new tenants, he makes himself known. He will knock things off the shelves. Um, we've had weird smells that go around the building as well. He will start the air conditioning up for you without being asked. How cool is that? We all need one like that. Yeah, that's pretty um, cool. Well, this time moment. of year, definitely. <laughs> yeah. um, he does all sorts of things to let you know that he's around. And also the security guards, he actually knows them all by name. And if they're not doing the job properly, not moving around quickly, he'll poke them in the back to let them know. Oh. And they need to moving a bit quicker, so. So he's still looking after the place, right? He is, he's still around. So he's a cool guy. I've not seen him yet, but I'm um, determined one bit. Yeah, hopefully. He yeah. has crossed for Yeah. And he's not our only spirit at the arcade, is he? No, he's not. No, we also have a child here, little Sydney. Um, unfortunately, he passed away when he was three years old. Um, his mum and dad used to have a, a shop here. Um, he unfortunately uh, died through gas poisoning, so, which his mother was blamed for, but we don't think that she was to blame. Um, we were downstairs doing an investigation. Um, one night and um, we had a group of ladies in here we did something called an EVP burst which is electronic voice phenomenon 
where we try and catch voices on digital recorders. Um, one of the ladies uh, did ask a question um, about do you play with some buttons on the stove, and he replied. So we might actually know now what happened to it. Oh, well, how about uh, this tea room down here? What kind of phenomena kind of happens down here? Uh, we've had people touched, prodded and poked. My favourite time was in here that just before the tour came in, I actually walked, walked around here and said, look, is anybody here tonight? Can you please, please, please play with my group tonight and just try and freak them out? The first three people that walked in here were young ladies. The first one had a hand touched, the second one had a, a, a top pulled down and the third one had a leg played with as well. And I was like, yes, so that's cool. Uh, but yeah, we have figures seen here. The equipment goes off. Um, for no apparent reason, and it loves the musical box in here. The paranormal musical box loves it, so I like that too. <laughs> and there's another place that you've had a few experiences the old oh, the storeroom. Oh, the storeroom upstairs, that's really good. I love that one up there. Um, yes, we've had all sorts of weird things happening here. Uh, there, um, mostly to do with the door. It for some reason wants to lock myself and the security guard and the group in the room, and there's no reason why it, the door should lock. Um, you can open it enough to see there's nobody's pulling the handle on the other side, um, but it, you, just, you just can't get it to open. Um, we've had to do something that I found really difficult, was actually to say, whoever's there, could you please release the door, which I found really strange to do. Yeah. But that's the only way we could get the door to open. Um, so it's actually opened my mind now to different things, asking different questions. Oh, so that's really interesting. Yeah, because I was always closed off to that sort of thing, but now, it's happened to us twice, so now we don't lock the door. We don't close the door now in the storeroom. We leave it unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah, exactly. And if someone wants to come to the Adelaide Arcade after hours and do a ghost tour or mm -hmm. maybe a bit of an investigation, how can they go about doing that? Come on to our website, adelaidehauntedhorizons.com.au or onto our Facebook page, Help the Book Now, and come and join us. We do tours here practically every fortnight and we do um, for investigations every two or three months, so it's really good fun. It's I cool. highly recommend it, guys. It's really cool. Alright guys, I'm now joined by Peter, who is one of the security guards here at the Adelaide Arcade. Can you tell me, how long have you been working here for? Uh, approximately 10 years I have been here. Wow, a long time. Do you believe this place is haunted? Yes, I do. I do. Very much so. Even my first day I was here, I um, had a little experience with the alarm. And probably a couple of months after that, I actually saw the figure, Francis, um, window shopping. I went to approach him to you know, show him the way out, but he sort of vanished out of my view. And, and then, I, then I knew that I was him. Wow. Just yeah. disappearing. That's yeah. amazing that you saw him. And you've been here for so long. Francis knows you by name. He does. Yeah, right? He does. So apparently I uh, was in our bathroom upstairs in the office and I was just happened to be washing my hands at the time. And uh, my name gets called out. So I actually responded and I said, yes, hang on a minute. And then it, I sort of looked in the mirror and I knew then that there was no one else except him. Just say yeah. hello. And I sort of freaked out a bit, a bit about that. So, yeah. Understandably. Mm, <laughs> Do you have any other experiences that you've had here that have really stuck out to you? Uh, probably, you know, just uh, sort of poked in the back. Um, it normally happens when I'm here alone, when I've, I'm the last person um, off the premises. Uh, even when I walk into my office, even now, I sort of get uh, goosebumps and my hair rises on, on the back of my head. And I just walk in there and I say hello, Francis, and that's it. It's pretty cool. So he's alright. Yeah. He's friendly. He yeah, he's friendly. You know, he loves playing jokes, especially uh, electrical equipment and that, like hand dryers, perhaps um, lifts as well. Oh. He likes scaring contractors on the side as well. <laughs> yeah, they sort of freak out when they hear footsteps behind them, and they're working up in the air conditioning um, roof. So you have had other people come to you and tell you about their experiences or strange stories here? Yeah? Yes, mainly uh, the people who actually work here, like staff and all that. Um, they tell me the, the uh, girls' toilets are haunted, uh, the last cubicle. They could be in there by themselves and uh, they see a shadow walk underneath the door oh. and the hand dryer will come on on its own. And it's, it's staff only so they know they're only in there on their own. Yeah. Mm. Oh, 
that's truly strange. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. That makes me really, really excited to investigate yeah. the Adelaide Arcade. It's an amazing location. So. That's a pleasure. Yeah, thank cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Okay guys, so we've just made it underneath the Adelaide Arcade and this is what is known as the Tea Rooms and I'm super excited because I've never been down here myself. I've never actually been able to get down here, but it is supposed to be haunted. I do just want to show you guys around though because there's a couple of areas that are interesting. First being this staircase here. And I just think that this staircase is so pretty and kind of creepy like how the shadows move and stuff sit out on the wall but this is how originally people would have been able to descend into the tea rooms uh, coming down here and that's pretty much just the middle level of the arcade up there now if you're kind of like me and you're like well what is a tea room it was for like the more wealthy well-to-do people to come down and enjoy their tea and coffee in a super fancy place and one of the reasons you know that it was a super fancy place down here is on the wall. Check out this gold. There's not too much left of it, but there is a fair bit here. And then another cool point of interest just back here is a little well. So that would have supplied the water above and it's like a little spring in there so you can actually see the water. There's a couple of interesting things said to happen down here in this area, so we're going to jump right into our paranormal investigation. Alright guys, so we're just setting up to start the investigation. Obviously I'm going to go over some capitals. I've got one here, and then I've got a couple more down the staircase. Reason being, if those things get physically moved, they'll light up. And we also have a REM pod here, so that will go off if anything gets close to it. Obviously we want to, you know, pick up if anything is coming up or down the staircase. We also have this uh, doodad here, which is... <laughs> a periscope. A, a par periscope? Periscope. Periscope. And that does uh, static electricity and it can almost like follow it around with these prong things here. And our other thing that we have with us in the corner is Alison. It's me. <laughs> You guys, Here I am again. <laughs> you guys know Alison by now. She's been in a lot of my videos and helped me with a lot of uh, the haunts in Adelaide. She runs Adelaide's Haunted Horizon. She's great. She's just setting up the paranormal music box so here. You've had this in your shows before, so that plays music if you should do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So if you break the field, basically it's going to go off and let you know. So yeah, there's a yep. beam coming in front of this. Yeah, it'll still pick you up at that distance. Oh, it will? Yeah. Sorry. It's just finding the right angle so it's not bouncing off anything too much. So I mean, if anything comes down these stairs, we got them covered. We're going to get them. <laughs> Alright uh, guys, we've just gone lights out and we're going to start reaching out. One thing I forgot to mention though, is we also have the ovulus set up over here. So if anything goes around that, it measures changes in its environment and that could correlate to a word in a database and it could talk to us, it could, it could try and communicate and say something which would be very, very cool. But we're going to start reaching out. Now, there's been a couple of um, deaths and a supposed hauntings here at the arcade and one of them is a small child known as Sydney and people, you know, it's believed that Sydney interacts with people in the tea room. Am I triggering this, Alison? Oh, wait, you're triggering. Oh, no, this... you're not close enough. Okay. So I thought I was walking know. towards the stairs. No, you weren't close enough. You've got to be pretty much on top of it. Oh, that's very cool. People in the tea room. Am I triggering this, Alison? Oh, wait, you're triggering. Oh, no. This, you're not close enough. Okay. So I was walking smile. towards the stairs. That was when I was talking about Sydney, the small child here. If, if Sydney is around, can you come back towards um, that thing that just lit up? If you can come back towards it again, we might be able to tell that you're here. We 
we've just dropped by to say hello. We're looking for someone friendly that we can talk to in the tea room down here. If there is anyone around, can you come and meet us? Come down the stairs, come into the old tea rooms. We do have some devices on the staircase. If you go close to any of those or even touch them, we might be able to see that you are here with us. Sydney, if you're here, you remember the music when we first brought the box in? If you make the music go off, we might even sing for you and sing you and hit that in. A nursery rhyme. Let's respond to that as well. I wouldn't be too sure of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm great. <laughs> Sydney, if you want to hear me sing, I will sing for you, but you have to do something for me first. Can you walk in front of that music box or come close to any of the other um, lights that we've laid out for you? Can you make a noise for us, Sydney? Can you tap on something? Maybe it's not Sydney that we have. Maybe we have Francis. I'm going to set this music box off for you. So this thing just uh, got caught. This little band here wasn't spinning the mechanism for the music. Yeah, oh it's no! Getting stuck on that cord. Give it a there, oh, there we go. All right. <laughs> so we'll try that again. All right. So now you know how this works. Can you come close to it? If you stand in front of it, maybe. Um, we can hear that it plays some music again. I think you'd rather hear that music than my singing. If anyone can hear my voice, my name is Amy and I would love for you to come and join us down in the tea room. We're looking for some people to keep us company. Especially if you're a child, I'd love to play some games. We have some really cool things down here that light up pretty colors. Come and join us on the staircase. Can you bribe the spirits? There's a coin. Oh, a shiny coin. I think it's a penny. On the little box on there that's got the red top. If you can get that penny off there, then you can keep it. You can do what you like with it. You can go and buy some sweets, some lollies. But you just need to be able to get it off there first. All right? You try really hard. Choose just came out. Can't have the flashy lights. Yeah, what else can we put up? <laughs> <laughs> put everything up. All 
Alright, what if we bring you, bring? what if we sing you a nursery rhyme? You remember the one you used to like and you used to put these K2s, you used to like them up whenever we sang it? I haven't been in for a long time, so I don't know if they still sing it to you, Sydney. But we used to sing you, Twinkle Twinkle. And you used to set those K2s off. So Amy's going to sing to you now, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. No, I don't even know them. You had a deprived childhood. <laughs> <laughs> I just haven't been around kids since I was a kid, so I don't know what. Right. It goes a little like this. Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle oh, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Was my singing so bad that you don't want to come down here? Please don't tell me that's the case. I will feel less bad about my singing if you can light one of these uh, lights up for us. Right now they're green, but you can turn them other colours if you come close to them. Oh, thank you. Oh. Thank you very much. I mean, it's cold temperature, right? Yeah, uh, and the air pressure has changed around it. So you're quite close to that penny. Are you going to grab it for, for yourself? It's all yours. We won't judge you if you want that penny. Just a few more steps up. Like the singing. Come I think I've got that thing where you've been in the dark for a long time and then your eyes are just like making it looks like movement, but there's nothing there. It was, I can't see it when I look at it, but when I'm focused over here, it's more just something, something that looks wispy coming through. But I, you know when it's so dark that there's not enough light for your eyes to pick up on anything, so it kind of looks like everything's moving anyway. It doesn't look like anything in particular. Only because I thought, you know, just over on the back wall, like slight shadowy movements, but I didn't know whether it was awesome. Oh, you felt like you could see something too? Yeah, that wasn't the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I thought the same thing, it's probably just light. And... Yeah, so Maybe we're... It was just like a, I don't know where you were seeing it, but I was seeing it more over in that direction, kind of day and thing. Mine was kind of like this, this way. Mm -hmm. um, so just so you guys, I mean, you're just seeing what the camera sees and the camera has a lot of infrared lights on it right now. So you can probably see this room really crisp, but we're actually standing in complete darkness besides a couple of small LED lights that are around us. So there is the tiniest little bit of light that our eyes can pick up. But I mean, looking down into a dark room with very minimal light is easy to see. See things that aren't there. <laughs> but I wouldn't say it looked definite or like anything, so. If there is someone back there in the back of the room, you don't have to hang out back there, maybe come and join us over here. So guys, it has been pretty interesting down here, not only because this is my first time ever in the Adelaide Arcade Tea Rooms, and it's just a cool hidden gem in my own city of Adelaide, but we did get a little bit of activity. We had the static meter uh, go off for no particular reason. And then after I sang uh, nursery rhyme, we also had the air pressure and the temperature drop on the staircase. That was pretty interesting. We missed it on camera, but Jared said that he sent one of the K2s light up as well after we'd been asking that to happen. 
Now, there's a lot of other places around the arcade to explore and so much ghostly phenomena that goes on here, so I'm excited to get back upstairs. Also, quite a lot of paranormal activity is said to happen here. My head felt funny and I had footsteps. Area where he died. Oh, that's creepy. Oh, poisoned. That's interesting. He unfortunately uh, died through gas poisoning. Really, really weird things. I think it just like knocked me a bit. That was weird. Probably the most active spirit here as well. Can you say one of our names? Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure that you are subscribed because I have a part two video coming up very, very soon. If you did find this episode interesting, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. That all really helps me out. You guys can do more reading on the Adelaide Arcade or other haunted places I visited over on amyscrypt.com. And you can keep up with me at amyscrypt on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching, Crypt Keepers. Until next time.